Las Vegas, Nevada, September 20th, 1998. It is shortly before noon at the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino. Two armed couriers, escorted by an MGM security guard, transport the casino's money toward an exit where an armored truck awaits. Suddenly, two gunmen confront them. One grabs the courier's guns, then snatches three money pouches containing nearly $350,000 in cash. Then the men flee through a side exit. The guards call the Las Vegas police and the FBI. Detectives and agents respond to the casino and interview the guards, who give investigators a rough description of their assailants. Any kind of logo on the jacket? Not that I saw. Okay. It was two, sure, two Latinos. Okay. They were, uh, not the robbers the left no physical evidence at the scene. Right. They were standing like right here. Like that. Like that. The MGM, like all Las Vegas casinos, has a vast network of security cameras. FBI agents review video of the crime. Special Agent Henry Schlump observes the way the lead gunman brandished his weapons, which suggests he could be a dangerous individual. Seeing a subject commit a robbery with a gun in each hand is not typical. That would be a rare occurrence. And I think it would uh, portend the violence that the subject was capable of. We got two fisted guns left. Okay, can you give me the outside tape? They go directly out to the sidewalk and down the street. Agents also watch footage captured by the hotel's exterior cameras, which reveals that the robbers fled across the street toward a neighboring hotel. Investigators go to the Hotel San Remo and review surveillance video from their exterior cameras. They see the robbers get into a pickup truck driven by a third man. But the video cannot provide a viable lead, according to FBI Special Agent Castle Nishimoto. The uh, quality of the film wasn't as such that we could make out exactly uh, the numbers on the plates. We had a few partials on the numbers, but we couldn't uh, uh, see the whole plate. We could only read the first three numbers, but we couldn't get the uh, three alphabet letters after that. Despite having only a general description, police begin searching for the getaway truck. However, they are unable to immediately find it. Nearly two months later, continued search efforts lead to a break in the case. Once again at the San Remo. In the casino's parking lot, a Las Vegas Metro Police detective locates what looks like the getaway truck. The truck's plate numbers match the partial numbers seen on the surveillance tape. To investigators, it seems the robbers waited for the heat to die down after the robbery, then drove the getaway truck back to the San Remo. The detective runs a check on the vehicle's identification number and discovers it was reported stolen almost three weeks before the MGM robbery. Running a check on the license plate, investigators find it was stolen from a disabled car kept at a Las Vegas storage area. 